Hey everybody, it's Dr. Rick again, dropping in on you. Uh, headed back to get my truck serviced. I um, went and they had a little wait, so I left. I'm on my way back up there. Uh, got one video out on the way up the first time. And I decided to, this is the perfect time to go ahead and get this out of the way. I'm gonna be able to kill two birds with one stone with this. Probably gonna take a lot of people off and I'll tell you why in a minute. Before I get started, I want to remind everybody that we're in the middle of a fundraiser. So if you believe in the work we do uh, at the Odyssey Project, the Black Voice, uh, Restoring Ghettos Forgotten Daughters, and the things we do, please go into the description box, click the link, uh, and show your love and support. If you're one that desires or prefers to give via Cash App, that information is in there as well. With that being said, look, uh, like I said, I'm about to tick some people off because uh, we love to look outward and point fingers and we, at the same time, don't want to be held accountable and we won't pass this for a behavior that is uh, deemed generally and universally unacceptable. Uh, here we are and uh, the news is broke on something that's kind of been floating around for a second, uh, but it's broken. It's going uh, viral now that he moved. Uh, Emu uh, Oduka, uh, the head coach for the Baltimore Celtics, is facing pending suspension, could be suspended as much as an entire year uh, for having and check this out in a pro inappropriate, consensual, intimate relationship with a person on the Celtics staff. Now, I'm going to address the first thing first. The first thing that everybody is going to be saying is, why is that getting so much press? And nobody's really talking about uh, Brett Favre, Jack in the state of Mississippi and the, whoever, what other government entities that funds uh, welfare, it could be the federal government as well, out of millions to build a, uh, I believe it was a soccer uh, stadium or something for his daughter's college. And it's been covered, it's been addressed. Shannon Sharp uh, went in on it and addressed it, but it's definitely not blowing up timelines uh, the way that this is and will probably be doing for a while. And I'm gonna tell you my total take on it. Um, so like I said, it's gonna probably tick off a lot of people because I'm gonna call a spade a spade. Uh, not here for likes and all that. And if when I get them, it's great. When people pat me on my back for what I do, I appreciate it. I say thank you, but I'm here to share truth and hopefully bring enlightenment and hopefully challenge us to live life at the highest level. Uh, but to answer that question, why Brett Favre isn't getting the same treatment as Ima Adoka, uh, that's real simple. Brett Favre, Brett Favre is white. When are we going to stop expecting them to take their system and extend to us the same privileges they created for them? Uh, it's that simple. Now, there are a bunch of other things that go under it. And I'll tell you this. And this is this is a part of the reality. Also, we play a part in it by what we give attention to and what we share. We have the ability to share that Brett Favre story on all our timelines, but we aren't. Some of us have, some of us have addressed it, but most of that, but everybody's talking about this, this situation here. And so, yeah, it's going to be showing and it's going to appear as if this is not it. I can guarantee you there are timelines where that Brett Favre story is lit up because it has an impact on the interests of the people on those timelines where it's being shared, on those news feeds where it's, it's flowing. That's not where our heads are. Our head is in the gossip. This is gossip solely because this dude is cheating on Neil Long. And it's a black coach in a white world, especially a, a historically white, and I, 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 I'm, I'm almost paused to say it, but historically white uh, organization. The Celtics have had some great black players. Uh, Bill Russell, the great Bill Russell, who just recently passed away, uh, and a number of others, uh, Sam Jones and a number of others, uh, escaping me, but I mean, uh, late Reggie Lewis, and you got some great players now, 
uh, Paul Pierce and Garnett was there for a while and all of that. But I'm telling historically, this organization stayed as white as long as it's po it possibly could. And if you've ever uh, been to Boston, you know if there's a place where the North resembles the South, it's Boston. But all that aside, it's happening because this black coach did something and it's going to be taken and it's going to be leveraged and it's going to be to send a message. It's going to be all kind of stuff. Everybody's playing an angle. That's the whole game. Everybody's going to take something and play an angle on it. Uh, so that's it. Here, here's where I want to address something. And this is where it's going to get tight because a lot of people don't like to be held accountable. Somebody came and said, you know, why do we always go out of the way to degrade black men? I, I get what you're saying. He's definitely catching way more flack than Brett Favre is catching. And everybody's jumping on it and everybody's got an opinion. Here's my thing on it. Him doing what he's doing is just as bad as anything else that I feel like we shouldn't be doing. Uh, I'm not making him carry the flag for uh, black male monogamy. But if you're going to walk it and talk it, live it, and here's the thing. Here's my issue. Here, here's the first thing you got to look at. All this talk that we've had over the last, what, few, two, two or three years about high value men and getting a 10. And, you know, all of a sudden now this guy is going to behave a certain way because he's got a 10. And then you look up and you see a situation like this. This dude, number one is, it's all kind of thing, has been engaged with Neil Long for at least nine years. I could be, it could be as many, 13, I can't remember. I know it's at least nine years that they've been in a seriously committed relationship calling each other fiancés and they haven't gotten married yet. Red flag. All right, but that's another thing to talk about at another time. Here's the thing. While that relationship between him and his coworker or colleague, whatever she is on, on that team, she's there. While that was consensual, I'm almost certain that the woman he had at home didn't consent. And that's the thing we need to be looking at is the fact that that was a lapse in law to him, but that was betrayal. And here's the thing. He proves that no matter who you are and what you do, you cannot stop someone who does not have a character strength in the area of loyalty from cheating. It's nothing you're gonna be able to do, nothing you're gonna be able to say, nothing you can do to change that. That person is who they are in the right circumstances, in the right situations, they are going to creep male or female. So the idea that you can be something other than a person that's very discerning about a person's character, because a person is gonna say what they want. If they want you bad enough and they are not uh, strong in character, they are going to say what they need to say to pull you in. And they may even at a certain level believe it. They may believe, man, this is the one I can settle down. This is the one, this is the one I'm gonna settle down with. But if they haven't developed the strength of character, the thing we call integrity, to underwrite the value of that loyalty, it's not going to happen. And you're going to end up in a situation like this. Now, my thing is, let's just call a spade a spade. Bro, bro the brother said, why do we keep degrading, uh, pushing this thing to degrade black men? I understand that is, that is literally an agenda to degrade black men, and I agree, we need to not participate in it. But here's the thing, we also need to tell black men to stop degrading themselves. We need to sit up and say, okay, if there's nothing to report, then we can be talking about the stuff they make up about us versus things we've actually done that we shouldn't have done, that we fed them ammunition to sit up and parade us around as something. He's not the poster boy for black men, but he's gonna be for a while. It's gonna be a bunch of women, black women, going around saying, that's why I don't trust these motherfuckers. Why? Because of shit he did. Again, Loyalty is a character trait. Practicing it at all costs 
is a character strength. It's integrity. You have to have that in you. You have to have been tried and tested in situations where you had to prove loyalty. Even if nobody else would have known, you failed. It's something that is extremely important to me. It's, ex it's something that I hold dear and valuable. And so I look at it and I say, okay, no matter what I'm going through, this is something I'm not gonna do. And the one thing I can look back on is no matter what is happening or has happened, this is how I'm gonna live. And I can sit up and say, dude, you did that. You did what you said you were gonna do. You walked it, you lived it. That's something to hold. That's something that says you are who you say you are. You're gonna have times where you slip. You're gonna have times where you fall. And you want people to extend grace have no problem extending grace my thing is i don't i'm not attacking the brother i don't want to but what i'm saying is i don't want to hear from people talking about how we are running the black man through the ground i i, I go hard in the paint for brothers i'm a brother i'm a black man unapologetically i constantly find myself in the crosshairs of the very people who spend money with me most because of how unapologetically black i am but i tell you what the thing is can't keep shooting yourself in the foot. You can't keep sitting up uh, doing things that put you in the crosshairs of the very people you keep saying are trying to take you out. If they try to take you out, you need to get yourself somewhere and find a space to grow, to recuperate, to recover, to get strong enough to stand up and be able to make moves. You don't need to be putting yourself in situations where they can snatch you. We've been doing this so long. We keep putting ourselves in situations where they can throw us in prison. We keep putting ourselves in situations where they can tear our name down. They keep, we keep putting ourselves in situations where they can sit up and say, this is how they behave. We have a responsibility, not to them. Fuck them. We've got a responsibility to us. That should be a way we want to carry ourselves and way way we want to treat our women. Now, the thing is, if that's not where you at and you want to be a part of that group that's sitting up saying, hey, man, I'm still doing me, get out there. Because my whole thing is the reason he's getting in trouble with it isn't because it wasn't consensual or he did something to violate her. It was very consensual. The reason it was considered inappropriate was because they have a no fraternization policy, which most companies have a no fraternization policy. That's like common. Uh, within companies because of the potential for all kind of things to go wrong and lawsuits and everything else to come out of it. There's no fraternization policies and uh, they're normally across the board. That is why it's considered inappropriate. Uh, it's getting blown out of proportion because number one, he's a black coach in a white owned league and in a white town okay and so it's going to be made big and, and there's some other uh political issues that are probably out front that are also playing a role in why it's getting pushed and how did it get there my question is uh everybody's upset about how many people are sharing it let me see it wasn't with two people in the bedroom while the shit was going on so somebody had to say something to somebody and that's how the shit got out again we put ourselves in situations this is the thing I tell people all the time. I don't care what he says. I don't care what she says about what they are not gonna do and who they're not gonna tell and how they're gonna keep it between the two of you. Once you engage in something with someone else, you are always gonna be at the risk of that person exposing what you guys did. It is that simple. It's no way around it. It's that simple. And so we are going to have to understand that look this is something my grandfather one of the first lessons two of the first lessons my grandfather taught me number one never play where you work number two never shit where you eat this dude did both and now he's and the thing is i believe he's going to come out of it well i think that uh, prior to that, he had a pristine image. I think that he can, uh, with the right PR people, he's going to make it work. I think that depending on how much time he got, I think that suspending the dude for an entire year is a bit much. Um, but uh, obviously, there are some other things going on with this. You never know what's, what's going to happen here and how it's going to play out. But obviously, he's got some things to deal with at home. Uh, what's going to happen with that relationship? Because now you've got a woman that you have a 13-year relationship with 
that now is not only had to deal with your uh, infidelity, but now is going to have to deal with the public exposure of your lack of loyalty towards her and what that means for her and her child. Uh, so all of that stuff is going on, man. So my thing is, instead of whining and crying about what's happening to black men, black men need to put themselves in a position beyond beyond uh, reproach. Uh, it doesn't mean that we not that we are perfect and we aren't going to make mistakes. I'm just saying that when we make one, we need to know that they're coming at us guns a blazing. As far as Brett Favre, Brett Favre has been shit from day one. He ain't never been nothing. He's a piece of shit. He's always been a piece of shit and ain't nothing going to change that. He just happened to have a cannon for an arm and had the ability to throw a ball accurately and he made a living doing it and put himself in a situation now where he's sucking systems. And you gotta understand that um, that um, you gotta understand that this state, Mississippi, is the poorest state in the in the union. And so the people that he's taking these welfare funds from are the poorest of the poor. And this is what that son of a bitch decided to do. So no, I'm not giving him a break. I just expect them to give him a break because that's what they do. The system is built for them. We can't expect their system to work for us. So when we're operating in their realm, we have to know the rules. Remember I told you, it's about how things work, knowing how things work. So that's my thing on him. You know, Brett Favre is a piece of shit and that's who he is. And the, actually we shouldn't even be discussing Emo in the same sentence with this dude. This dude, man, made a mistake. He needs to deal with it. He needs to be held accountable. He doesn't need a pass, but he doesn't need to be buried either. And that's my stand on it. On that note, I'm out of here.